Hey guys, so it's finally here. I've been waiting for it for quite a few days. An update from the Icelandic Met Office regarding what is going on with the magma chamber. What can we expect? Because their last update was basically March 7th. And then I was wondering earlier today, I'm like, hey, on March 12th, their recent hazard map expires so they have to release a new one so they were a little bit late with that so now on the 13th they have released the new hazard map but they also have released other updates and i want to go through that with you guys and i mean isn't this stunning this time this time it's different than the last few times i have a feeling now this thing is taking its time. So um, will we see an intrusion? Will we see an eruption? One thing we know for sure that that magma chamber underneath the Swartzangi area is really, really filling up. We'll get to that and it's it looks like it has filled up to an extent like max more than it was before, before we've seen all the last events since November 10th. So what is the Met Office saying in their update that they just released? So they are saying the probable sequence of events for the next few days is Yes, they are saying, of course, number one, the volume in the magma chamber underneath the Swartzengi area still continues to increase. So it's not that that magma reservoir is empty. It still keeps pumping up magma in the higher magma chamber and puts pressure on that chamber. And at some point, the maximum elasticity is reached. So they're saying... Since this is increasing and still filling up, this could end up in a new magma flow, meaning intrusion, or an eruption where the magma reaches the surface and we will see another lava flow. So number two, um, an eruption could start at a very short notice, even less than 30 minutes. We've discussed this in our previous video because existing tunnels are there, so we don't expect a large massive earthquake swarm so it can kind of sneak through that's why the warming time is shorter and they're saying an eruption is most likely to occur in the area between Stora Skogfell and Hagafell and they have released another aerial picture here and you can see in the front that's the city that's the town it's not a city um thankfully it's not a city it's the town of Grindavik and you can see the black areas you can see the lava flow that we have seen in in January that was so close to Grindavik and there you can see that second fissure that was really flowing into the town and burning the three homes and then you can see where it did cross the road that leads north out of Grindavik towards Swartzengi, Grindavik Ovego where it had crossed the road they have cleaned that up in the meantime and then you see um, on the right side the larger field that is where the December eruption took place but but also the last eruption and you see where the lava did flow it did flow um, west to Mount Thorbjörn and then around Swart Sangi, the power plant and the Blue Lagoon sort of thing um, it's not an ideal aerial picture um, but it shows what it's good in this picture is it shows how close that is to Grindavik if you just look at Google Maps or something, I always have the feeling, I don't know how you feel it, guys, it looks like it's further away, but in these like bird's eye aerial pictures, you understand the the magnitude of this, how close this is. And they have always said, had the eruptions taken a few days longer, more magma would have flowed into critical areas. So this is what they're expecting within the next few days. And they're saying there is still a chance, a high chance of an eruption. And then they're saying that their model calculations show that the magma accumulation underneath Swartzengi continues as at the same rate as before. So it's not slowing down. And then they're saying that in the previous events, the previous eruptions and intrusions that we have seen since November 10, um, the magma has flowed when 
the total amount of magma accumulated under Swartzengi is between 8 million cubic meters and 13 cubic meters. So when it has reached that range, something happened. So we had two intrusions, three eruptions. So the total amount of magma under Swartzengi right now has exceeded that limit. That's what they're saying. So has it exceeded 13 million cubic meters? Kind of, they were saying, the magma chamber is filling up with about half a million cubic meters per day. And they already said a few days ago that it had reached 10 million cubic meters. So then if you we continue it today, it should be over 12 million cubic meters. But they have also released um, a new graphic that kind of shows where it is. And there they put it more in the 10 million cubic meter range. But if I look at what they said before, it should exceed the 13 million cubic meters. But, you know, anyways, maybe they will clarify that pretty soon. But um, I think we're definitely in the top level right now. So does that mean that magma can flow further because there more there's more pressure there? Because we've seen the last two days, they have said that there were more earthquakes Maybe because the weather has calmed down and their me seismic measuring stations are able to measure smaller amounts of vibrations now better because they're not disturbed by the weather. Maybe that's the reason why we see more. But what they did say is they're more towards the southern area of that magma dike that has formed on November 10th. And we know what is south. That's Grindavik, right? So um, the total amount of magma has exceeded that limit. That tells us something should be imminent, right? So the pressure in the magma chamber while we're waiting is continuing to build up in that magma chamber. So that's why it is a high chance that magma will make its way out of that magma chamber to release the pressure and go into the Sutnuka crater series. And then from there, where will it go? Will it erupt there or will it go north or south along the dike flow into Grindavik? Who knows? But they're thinking, and they said like two days ago, they think it's going to happen this week. They're now saying in the coming days. But <clears throat> yeah, guys, that is definitely interesting. So look at that graphic. So in that graphic, the line that is most, my, my voice is somehow fading. Maybe I have... <clears throat> been screaming around after Woody and Eddie too much today. If you have seen my previous video, um, we were outside. I was outside with the gang with the three guys and they were hopping around and all. That. And I have some outtakes in that video. I'll put it in the end screen. And guys, since I already have interrupted the video, could you do me a favor? Leave this video a like, watch it till the end and leave me a comment. What do you think? Will we see an eruption or an intrusion? So help me push this video out a little bit in the algorithm. Thank you for that. Let's continue. So let's look at the red line. We see a square, a red square. So that means there we had the intrusion on March 2nd. And then, of course, there was something flowing out of the magma chamber, but it was very, very minor. So not much. And it started to build up right away. And that's what we see in that red line. It starts rising again, filling up, right? And compare it to the other events that we have. For example, like the purple line, that was an intrusion. That was the in November 10th intrusion. And look at the amount of magma, right? And then we had an eruption, the yellow line. That's the February 8th eruption. So there is definitely less magma in the chamber when we had the February eruption that really did send quite fast lava out that did flow towards 
the sword sangi power plant and the blue lagoon but there are these protection walls in place which was good but it did flow over the main road and over the hot water pipes that supply the surrounding areas with heat so that is interesting and it tells us something is there and what they're also saying is that since last friday we've got wednesday now around 140 earthquakes have been recorded near the Sudnuka crater series so near that area where they think the eruption is most likely but also in Grindavik. So 148, or er, I'm sorry, my tongue, 140 earthquakes, Sutnuka Crater Series, and Grindavik. So, of course, the vast majority of the earthquakes are small earthquakes below 1.0 in magnitude, but the largest earthquake was 2.8 in magnitude on Friday evening at a depth of about five kilometers near Mount Thorbjorn. So, near Grindavik and they said it was um, south east of Mount Thorbjörn. In the last two to three days there has been a slight increase in the number of earthquakes in the area but I've already said this might be because of the weather and because it has been calm and so that's why the measuring devices could be more sensitive. So they are also showing um, an updated hazard map. Um, so the risk assessment is unchanged from the last version. So nothing has really changed because nothing has happened. So the risk assessment takes effect today on March 13th. Um, here they're saying Tuesday, March 12th at 3 p.m. and it is valid until Tuesday, March 19th without any changes. So if you look at that map, we have the orange areas, the orange hazard levels, that's um, the zone one, um, that's the Swartzengi area where the Blue Lagoon is located, and then we have zone four, that is Grindavik, and then the most interesting part is that red rectangle area because that's where we have seen the last three eruptions and the darker shadowed areas there you can see the eruptions and you can see that the last eruption did flow into the two orange areas into one and three so that is what they think in that area something's going to happen and now the question is close to Grindavik or not or same area as the last eruption so and also of course the the flow path might change because we already have lava that did flow in that area and that might divert the lava somehow right um so they are saying, and, and I really think it is a little bit unusual what's happening today. So we're wondering every day, wow, right? What's going on? And the Met Office is also saying that it is unusually a tight sequence of events so far. And they said um, the magma intrusion that happened on March 2nd behaved in a different way um, than the previous two magma runs that we had. And that's why they're saying that the scientists need to collect more data to see if the March 2nd sequence of events is a sign that the activity associated with the magma accumulation underneath Swartzengi and the unusually fast sequence of events with repeated magma flows and subsequent eruptions is changing. So is it changing? Is something happening? is it flowing somewhere else is it gradually flowing out what's happening right um because it is a little bit weird and it, it was weird kind of that there wasn't an eruption on march 2nd so it's it's amazing it, the tension is never leaving it it's still increasing in that area right so it's it's we thought okay four weeks eruption four weeks eruption is going to remain like this for a while but now this volcanic system is kind of putting us to the test and is kind of creating for me in my opinion a little bit of a mystery so they said that previously they could compare the sequence of events in 
in this Sudnuka crater series, in this red rectangle area, to the sequence of events that occurred in the Krafla eruptions that began 1975. And in a 10 year period, there were like 20 magma flows and nine of these magma intrusions ended with an eruption. And I wanna show you um, a diagram that kind of explains that. In Krafla, the magma flows all entered the same magma tunnel. They all flowed the same way. They took the same road, so to speak, but they had different sizes, magnitudes of how much lava was coming out, how, what, how much magma was going on its way. So the eruptions did not occur with the regular intervals that we have seen right now or so far at the Sudnuka Crater series. And in fact, right now, they're saying that it's very unusual, guys, how constant this activity has repeated so far. It's really been like every four weeks, then every three weeks. So they had the feeling that even the time between events was shortening. So if you see um, that diagram here, it shows the interaction between the formation of magma tunnels and the land elevation in the middle of that Krafla crater. So you see the red line in the lower picture that shows the elevation of a measuring point within the Krafla crater. And the upper diagram shows where the metamorphic zones were in each rich. So you see over the years, right, what has happened. It wasn't really as rhythmic as it is right now. So very, very interesting, guys. Stay tuned. I mean, if you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe so that you can be on the pulse with Silky. So that's me. And that you get notifications when I release updates. And for sure, I'll notify when there is an eruption or something else happening. Um, I'll keep a watching eye on that, guys. So thank you so much for your support. Please don't forget to leave it a like and uh, let me know. What's your guess? Eruption or intrusion? A large eruption? Where do you think? Grindavik or Sutnuka Crater series? And will there be more lava flow towards the Swartzengi area to my friend the Blue Lagoon and the power plant? Let me know, guys. I'm out of here. Thanks for your ongoing support of my channel. You guys are awesome. The three other guys, Rudy, Apollo, and uh, Eddie, they're sleeping. They're tired. They've been out a long time today because I've been editing and doing my video all outside and they could run free. So they say hi, a snoring hi, and uh, see you soon, guys. Bye-bye.